Content warning. This video contains details which some viewers may find disturbing. North Korea is one of the worst human rights violators on earth. Many of us know this, but the sheer scale of the human rights crisis in North Korea means that specific issues within that crisis can sometimes escape attention. In today's video, we're going to discuss one of these issues and hope that we can bring to your attention a lesser known but vitally important aspect of the human rights abuses taking place in North Korea. That issue is religious freedom, or rather, the total lack of religious freedom. Those who choose to believe in any spiritual faith of any kind are subjected to brutal persecution by the North Korean state. Religious believers are among the most vulnerable of the vulnerable. Why is this? Prior to the Soviet occupation of the northern part of the Korean Peninsula at the end of World War II, and the proclamation of the North Korean state in 1948. Christianity was an example of the religion that thrived in North Korea. Pyongyang was formerly known as the Jerusalem of the East for its number and diversity of churches. When Kim Il-sung, who was North Korea's founder, came to power, his socialist revolution focused on achieving a complete remaking of society. In Kim's supposed socialist utopia, everything was separated into a false binary. There were things that helped the communist revolution, and there were things that harmed it. Anything that concentrated powers in the hands of the Korean Workers' Party elites in Pyongyang was considered positive. Anything that could be linked to the former Japanese colonial government or to so-called American imperialism and capitalism was negative. This made Christianity a target for the new regime, but anything considered vaguely superstitious, such as traditional North Korean shamanism, was also considered a harmful distraction from achieving the purity of the socialist revolution. Religious believers were offered a terrible choice, abandon their faith and devote themselves to Kim's revolution, or keep their beliefs and be sent to prison. Well, it's been over 70 years since then, and the situation has only worsened over time, as the Kim regime has strengthened its control and transformed North Korea into a totalitarian police state, ruled by the Supreme Leader's cult personality. Spiritual believers have been systemically persecuted, purged, and even executed. This continues into the present day of the Kim Jong-un. The United Nations 2014 Commission of Inquiry into North Korea, which determined that the North Korean state should be prosecuted on charges of crimes against humanity, explained the logic of why religious believers are persecuted in the way they are. The North Korean education system, combined with the Korean Workers' Party propaganda, teaches North Koreans that the Sudong, the supreme leader, is essentially a deity. The North Korean government operates under this kind of quasi-religious state ideology, one which only allows for worship and loyalty toward the Kim family dynasty. Children are taught from a very young age that traditional religions are something to be feared and distrusted. This is why North Korea persecutes spiritual believers so fiercely. Their faith in a higher power poses a threat to the absolute rule of the supreme leader. It's important to remember that by attacking religious believers in this way, North Korea is in direct violation of international human rights treaties as well as its own constitution. The freedom of religion is technically supposed to exist in North Korea, but the constitution qualifies this by saying that religion isn't allowed to be a force that is harmful to the socialist state. Even if this stipulation wasn't fair, the North Korean constitution is largely meaningless anyways, because the real absolute laws in North Korea are the 10 principles of establishing a monolithic leadership system. The Ten Principles teach North Koreans to act, think, and believe only what the Supreme Leader tells them, and this takes supremacy over any other written law. So let's look at international law instead. North Korea has ratified the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, as well as the International Covenant on the Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights. Each of these are legally binding documents, which essentially turn the United Nations Universal Declaration on Human Rights into law. For starters, North Korea is in direct violation of Article 2, Article 18, Article 20 of the ICCPR, and Article 2 protects against religious discrimination. Article 18 guarantees freedom of religion, and Article 20 forbids incitement of discrimination against religion. And beyond this, protection of freedom of religion and belief has become part of customary international law through instruments such as the UN Declaration on the Elimination of All Forms of Intolerance and Discrimination Based on Religion or Belief. Customary international law means that all countries are bound by its norms, whether they have signed a treaty or not. Simply put, there is no excuse for the abuses North Korea has committed against its religious populations. It is legal and inhuman. There are organizations such as Korea Future and Open Doors extensively documented the crimes committed by North Korea against religious individuals. Of these, two practices most targeted for persecution are North Korean shamanism and Christianity. North Korean shamanism is an ancient and spiritual way of life which predates the arrival of organized religion on the Korean Peninsula. 
While it takes many forms, at the core of this belief is the notion that all life on Earth is animated by spirits, and those who are in touch with these spirits can help guide others. Shamanism grew in popularity during the disastrous famine in North Korea in the 1990s. The North Korean state, however, has criminalized superstitious activities that it believes could be damaging to the socialist order, and this is often used to target followers of shamanism. Criminal sentences for shamans often begin with an arrest that has no valid legal basis. Many are deprived of their rights to a fair trial, and any trial that do occur are staged to produce a conviction. Most are sentenced to a term of forced labor in penal facilities, with the length of their sentence varying anywhere from a number of months in minor cases up to 10 years in more severe cases. Shamans often encounter torture and other cruel, inhuman, and degrading punishments while in detention. This may include regular and severe physical beatings, positional torture, or being forced to ingest contaminated food. The majority of those suffering in those conditions on charges of shamanism are women. In extreme cases, shamans who are considered to be particularly spiritual are at risk of death. For example, Korea Future has documented an instance where a child, who was considered by some shamans to be touched by God, was arrested and executed by state security officials. Christianity appeared in the Korean Peninsula in the 19th century, and as we mentioned, it developed deep roots in the area. Today, to simply be Christian in North Korea is to be marked as an ideological traitor to the revolution. Owning a Bible is a political crime. Christians are arrested, detained, made to do forced labor, tortured and sometimes executed for simply possessing religious materials or spreading the word of their faith. The danger of being Christian in North Korea cannot be overstated. Once detained, it's common for them to be sent to secretive political prison camps, where many are given an indefinite life sentence and are subject to regular torture, including several physical beatings if they attempt to pray. The conditions in these camps amount to extreme suffering, and may lead to death on their own if an individual is not marked for execution. One of the youngest Christians documented as serving a life sentence in a political prison camp was a two-year-old child. This issue is urgent, not just for North Korean shamans and Christians, but for anyone in the country who chooses to embrace a belief system that is different from the official cult of personality built around the Kim family dynasty. If you'd like to learn more about the human rights situation in North Korea, please feel free to check out our reports of the Committee of Human Rights in North Korea at our website, hrnk.org. If you'd like to take a deep dive into the issue of religious persecution, you can also check out any of the excellent work being done by Korea Future and Open Doors to give a voice to those vulnerable individuals and document the abuses committed against them. You may also want to check out the reports from the U.S. Office for International Religious Freedom, which recently redesignated North Korea as a country of particular concern. For those located outside the U.S., a number of national parliaments also operate cross-party working groups on the freedom of religion for relief including in the United Kingdom, Canada, and the European Union. For a complete list of such groups around the world, check out the website at the International Panel of Parliamentarians for Freedom of Religion or Belief at ippforb.com. No matter where they are, you can always contact your elected representatives to help keep attention on this crisis and advocate for accountability for the Kim regime. Thanks for watching.